Welcome back to the lovely place, you lovely people. I want to just briefly share with you what we just finished and that's in a previous video and what we're about to do today so what I just finished doing was removing this loader this L620 loader off of my Case I-875C tractor so if you want to see this loader removal and see step by step on how to do that check out the next the, the previous video that's uh, on our channel here and uh, while you're at it go ahead and subscribe and if you like what we're gonna do today I would love it if you would like this video so today, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Farmall Case I-875C and we are going to change the oil and filter. This is the first change of this oil and filter on this 75C. Now, it's not the first time we've done any pretty good maintenance on it. In fact, the maintenance I did at the first 50 hours has prepared me for what we're going to do today. And, and here's why. In the first 50 hours, and there is a video on that as well. Uh, on our channel here uh, you have to remove and replace the two fuel filters along with doing several other things in order to change the oil on this tractor again you have to remove get those two fuel filters out of the way and then deal with your oil so that you can reach the oil filter and replace it uh, and then put all of that back so we're not going to be replacing the fuel filters this go around like we did on the first 50 hours but we're going to remove them put them back on prime the pump uh, to get the fuel circulating we had a lot of challenges i was definitely learning as i went in that previous video for the first 50 hours so i'm hoping today it goes a whole lot smoother uh, as we are trying to get in here and change the oil before we get started i want to show you something this it's probably the best thing you'll see on my channel ever. It's a little blue heart that my granddaughter gave me and I told her that I would put it right here in my tractor. And uh, so she'll she'll know that we did this. I wonder where the best place would be. We'll just stick her right over here. And here we are, me and my granddaughter. I tell you what, I've got four grandchildren. This one came from, this came from one of them and uh, the heart came from another one. And I've got all kinds of little art projects all over the place from the other the other one and then the the little one she's uh, she'll be coming along with a lot of little projects soon i'm sure so i love you kiddos now we're gonna stick this instead i was thinking right up here would be a nice place kind of up there out of the line of sight but on the left side of me right where the heart's at don't get no better than that let's get this hood popped open now that the loader's not here there's all kinds of room to move around you definitely don't want to do this job or even try to attempt it with that loader connected you got to have it off in order to get in here and do what you need to do next thing and this was a lesson learned i did it late during the process is i need to remove this whole toolbox mount so i'll have more room to get in once i get this panel off all right let's remove the toolbox now when i undo the take these two bolts that's all that holds it when I take the second one out, this toolbox is going to fall and hit this tire. So make sure your head's not in the way when you do that. There we go. Don't ask me how I know that. All right, I'm going to put these bolts right back in their place so we don't lose them always a good little thing to do all right so that's out of the way it's time to remove this little area here this plate that's uh, covering it's funny how an owner's manual doesn't tell you anything but i learned this the hard way too you just simply need to unscrew this section let me get some pliers or channel lock unscrew that little plastic bolt there to grip it with if it's tight once you do this it's a matter of just sliding things out the bottom of this has a hook that it sets down on and this over here has two pins or little grommets that go into two little holes on the cab frame or the tractor frame or the body of it okay so that's out that's up 
and that's off. So yeah, pretty simple. Right here are our two fuel filters. This is the pre-filter. This is the main filter. Right there is our oil filter. So yeah, there's lines. There's a lot of things in the way, but especially these two oil or fuel filters in order to get to it. This thing's always going to be in the way, and it's a, definitely a challenge when you're removing things. But one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to remove this electrical connection that's under this pre filter that's connected to the bottom of it. And again, <laughs> the things you learn, uh, and this video will help you if you've never seen this, a lot of this stuff's just not in the manual. Uh, you know it's going to save you a ton of time so there's a little clip in here i'm going to show you in just a second that we're going to push in so that we can remove that electrical lead okay we're in here a little closer now and down underneath here just really hard to get your fingers in there i want to see if i can turn this a little so you can see it there's a you see that metal pin right here on this left side of it it allows you there's a little indent on the plastic and you can push in on it and pull down on the electrical connection and I just did it that quick and look there it is it's this little little um, wire right here when you push that down those pop out on the sides and it allows you to take that right off now in my previous service when I was doing these fuel filters just figuring that out took me well longer than you want to know if you want to laugh at me just go ahead and watch that video I just wanted to show you in here as we're getting into the manual that it's telling him telling me to remove some brackets so i think what it's referring to is this bracket right here there is a a bolt on the back side of this and then there's a bolt in there that holds this i believe if i remove those two bolts i'll be able to pivot this out and get it out and away from the 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 uh, oil filter and give us a little bit more room to work so after looking at my tools i don't have an extension with me long enough to get back to that back bolt let me show you where that bolt's at it is right back there on the base there's two of them one the bolt part the head is up against this wall the silver wall over here and the other one is right there in the the main bracket and just follow that out and it's on this one but i'm gonna try to just work around it it's going to be a little bit more challenging but hopefully we can do it now those instructions also mention removing this and now, i didn't do that the first time i don't recall but i think it's as easy as pressing down and possibly pulling out on this so it's talking about this one here and there's a squeeze uh, area you can squeeze on the top if you see it there and on the bottom if i put my finger under here i can feel it let's squeeze both sides of that and see yeah it pops right off okay so we got that out of the way see if i can find a place to hide it there we go little fuel's coming out right here a little diesel okay good i did not do that the first time that i removed these so uh maybe that will help when we try to get the fuel circulating back through uh I, I actually learned something reading the manual the other day as far as when to pump this little pump and bleed out the fuel lines when you're trying to start the tractor after you've reinstalled these we'll see if it works so first thing i'm going to do next step is to remove this large one and i have a feeling she's going to be too tight to do it by hand but maybe not yeah i got it ah. okay let's get this bucket under here get ready to drain it into that bucket be a little messy for a minute all right so tricky part is getting it out of here without spilling too much there's the bucket all right we'll set her down in the bucket okay i believe next we're going to remove the other one so because we've already removed that sensor from this pre-filter and by the way i turned that sensor upside down so that all that fuel would not drain into it and get it all wet with diesel fuel now we just need to take this one off and we'll see if we can get it by hand it seems tighter all right let's try a wrench see if we can use these got these vice grips here i guess that's what they're for we're going to see if we can use these without destroying this puppy in the process 
because we're going to reuse this fuel filter and I do not want to mess it up. I remember when I took the first one, when, when I took it off the first time in the previous service, I did mess it up. Okay, we're getting close here to getting around it. All right, we're around it. All right, I got a little tight. Let's see if we can. Let's loosen this a little more. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to hurt that filter at all. Just scrape it up a little bit. All right, yeah, I can do the rest by hand now. Now, I've got to remember. I'm reusing these filters, so I don't want to get any of that trash that's on the outside of it on the inside. So I need to clean all this up and I'll get a towel and get all this cleaned off the edges before we put that back on. It's still got plenty of fuel in it, so I'm not gonna dump that out. We'll do the same with the next one. Okay. Yeah, see all the the trash and debris that we've got up here. All right, before we remove this oil filter, which is coming up soon, we're gonna drain the engine oil, and uh, we do that over on this side. It says to do that first. So we'll have to remove this engine oil cap, which is always tight, always challenging to get off. Make sure you don't have any debris that's gonna dump down in there. You can see that we're still good, and the oil actually still looks good, but it's time to do it. Next thing we wanna do, Let's get a big old pan under here. And uh, there is a plug on this side. And there should be a plug. Yep, there's a plug on the other side. We're going to take both of these plugs off. The oil's going to drain out on both sides. We'll do one side at a time to make sure we've got enough width to catch them both. All right, lovely people. So uh, yeah, I had to step away a minute. You can see the sun's down further than it was. It took me about an hour and a half to get into town and to uh, go to about two or three places and grab a bite to eat on the way back. But uh, I had to go for this, a uh, hex key wrench set. There's metric and then there's standard. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, it's gonna have what I need. We've got, uh, like I said, uh, metric and standard and it starts at an eight and goes up. I had up to a 10 and I had up to a three eights in the uh, standard, but it's a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking one of those is gonna fit. And what I'm talking about, I need to fit is the uh, the plugs to drain the oil. So let's hope that this works. So in this set, it looks like the 7 16 is the closest <clears throat> fit for this plug. Got a little bit of play in it. The way this one felt in there being a little loose, I have a feeling that it's really calling for an 11. My other sets, I had up to a 10. And this one goes up to a 19. I assumed it had everything between, but it doesn't. It starts next at 12, so the 12 is a little big. So I'm thinking the 11 would have been the right fit. And the, uh, the one half is, of course, too big. So, yeah, that's where we stand. Okay, let's see if this little bar off my hydraulic bottle jack will help me. There it is. Nice. Leverage works every time, y'all. When it ain't a perfect fit, though, it wants to kind of lodge in there. Now, I can't get past those. I got to get this out in order to get past these lines here. Come on, y'all. There we go. All right. Let's turn it this way. This thing may spew right out pretty hard. I'm gonna move the camera back. Pull this over here. Woo! I'm glad I had it over where I did. That's a lot of oil. So we got another one on the other side. We'll see if it's got the same amount in there or not. Okay, moving on. So we're on the other side now. This is a hydraulic filter, but that's just fuel, diesel fuel that came out of those fuel filters right above this area where I took those off. It just drained all over that. So here's my other spot, my other plug. So we're gonna see if we can get that one out. 
let's kind of pop it right in there and get our little stick okay we want to go the other way we want to come this way let's do this first there we go let's pull it toward me that'd be lefty loosey there it is i tell you this allen wrench is just not the right size i'm gonna go pop it out real quick when you twist them in there like that it kind of wants to strip it out so i'm gonna have to get me an 11. i think that's the right one all right i don't know why it's acting so there we go now let's see if we can catch this one before it gets drops in the pan see how much oil sprays out here i don't know if it's got the same amount on this side or not uh, got on my hand that time not nearly as much i'm assuming that there's a division a divider in there and it probably holds the same amount total you know it's one unit but uh it somehow it divides a little bit but the majority of it came out on the other side so here are our oil drain plugs they've got a o-ring right in there rubber o-ring the manual says to replace the seals but these look great and i don't have any so uh, we're going to reuse them going to get those plugs back in and then we're going to go ahead and uh, get that filter out and uh, replace it and then we're going to add uh, oil and uh, see if we get this job done before the sun goes down all right i'm just gonna clean this little area off here just to get off any impurities any junk that might be stuck on here now it's time to get the plugs back on i just hope i can get a decent torque on it with that allen wrench that doesn't quite fit perfectly without getting that allen wrench stuck up in there again and having a difficult time getting it out that should do it all right of course you check the uh the uh, plug this is a uh, i think this is magnetized and you're looking for any kind of metallic debris on there and we were good we didn't have anything Let's see if i can get in there easy okay we'll just need to tighten her down Okay, so we got it to a decently tight spot. Now, put on our little bar here and try to get it a little bit of a torque. Now what I just did, I could feel it. I was stripping through this. So I got enough of a torque that it actually stripped past this point on this deal. And if I'm not careful, I'll strip out my, my plug. So I don't want to do that. I'm just hoping that it doesn't leak because it's not as tight as I'd like it to be. I'm going to get an 11 and come up here with it and tighten these down before we do any work with it. Okay. Got an airplane going over. Sorry about that crazy noise. All right. Good torque to knock this loose here. All right, let's wipe this down so that we can look real close for leaks on these plugs because we will start it and test it when we're done. Okay, we're good. Okay, I'm back over here at the oil filter. This is what we've been waiting for. I don't know how in the world I'm gonna get this thing loose because there's nowhere to grip it. There is nowhere to grip it at all. You know, you could always drive a screwdriver right in there and twist it. 
actually this way i don't like the idea of doing that because you could drop something down inside there that broke loose inside that oil filter you've got this in the way you got this in the way but the big thing is this rubber hose right here that connects to metal down low and metal up high there's just no getting it out of the way what a pain in the rear if all else fails just start cleaning it off get all that dirt off of there i don't know why it just makes me feel like i'm doing something while i'm thinking <laughs> while i'm trying to figure out how am i going to get in there and get that off goodness gracious now this i just disconnected that one like i did that other one so i'm going to stick that back there now, i don't even think it talked about disconnecting yet but this one and that one is now disconnected so i'm able to get in here a little bit better maybe i'll turn it the right way though there's no moving that and there's no moving this interesting i already know what i'm about to try is not going to work this will not fit in there but i gotta try it right i got to try maybe i can just get a little bit of a grip on this section here just enough to twist it there's just no grip grip in that Let's, i wonder if i get on the other side that's why they want you to move this bar because you could get around this and you could go in there and grip it and i just like i said i don't have an extension that will fit that so get that out of that way Let's see if i can get around it with this i can't Yeah, I really need that moved. That would have been nice. Yeah, I don't see myself getting that done with the tools I have up here at the lovely place right now. That sucker's tight. We're back here with the wrench again. I'm seeing if I can force it this way. If I can. Yeah. I'm all the way. Goodness gracious, y'all. Now, that, that's... I had some torque on that. So I ate into that. I, I think this is preventing me from pushing that direction, really. I'm scarring that filter up that's for sure well it's been an afternoon it's been a day the day started well before i began this oil change project and the sun she's going down not so fast let's see if i can get in there this way i'm just trying to get that bolt off I broke this one loose but there's another one back behind it like I said up against that wall that might be challenging for me to get out this evening but we're gonna start this gets close as we can get to being ready for it okay so I got a second wind actually I got a light this Milwaukee light really put some light on the subject so i just bought myself a little bit more time now i was able to get a couple of extensions together go in underneath and i pulled off this nut or this bolt right here using this the next bolt like this is on the back side so i'm going to get a wrench and see if i can get in there and uh, get it out okay i found a wrench that should fit hopefully just getting back in there that is a that is a bear i mean they did not want you working back here okay lovely people well i was able to get the one bolt out as you know up in there but that one that's back behind that wall over there you can see the threads coming through that one i cannot get a wrench back in there so today 
has come to an end, but tomorrow is happening right now. Let's get started. Okay, we're back at it. It's a new day. It's the next day, as a matter of fact. The difference is it's windy and it's blustery. So you're gonna hear a little bit of wind. Look at that, that's gorgeous. You're gonna hear a little bit of wind today, but we're gonna get this job knocked out, finished up. I brought some new tools, so we're gonna get some things accomplished. We left off trying to get that stinking oil filter off, so we're gonna pick right up. So we actually did leave off trying to remove this bracket, and you might remember I got that one bolt off back in there. And then there was that one over there. Well, I brought some tools that can help me get back in there, hopefully. But before I even bother doing that, I did get a filter wrench. It's a universal. Uh, it's a Pittsburgh three-jaw universal oil filter wrench. We will see if I can get this on the top of that. This, These little arms expand out, and then you can ratchet it and try to just simply unscrew it from the top. So we'll see if we can get that over the top. And if we can, that'll save me from dealing with this bracket, hopefully. So we're gonna give that a go and see if we can make it work. If not, I wasted a few bucks. It's very cumbersome, very weird to me. Okay, let's start with it in its smallest position. Let's spread them out, put it on. Yeah, this thing may be going right back to Harbor Freight. <laughs> I don't see it working. I really don't. Right, let's see if we can get a ratchet on top of this. I, I, I Now that I look at it, this device here, this piece, is going to avoid me even putting a ratchet in there. That's a fail. I'm not even going to try it. Okay, change of plans. Before, before I go trying to get this filter off anymore, I am going to attempt to get that screw out that, as I mentioned, you see the uh, shiny uh, wall back there the head of it's on that side so i have no idea what size that head is uh but uh, i did already remove the one right in front that has the hole uh, the one that goes straight in there that one was easier to get to this one's going to be a little bit of a bear but i got this little pittsburgh wrench that has the ratcheting system on it and we're going to see if this is the right size and if it'll get in there it does this cool little flex here so i don't know what that's called but Hopefully it'll work. There's not gonna be much that you can see here, so we may just skip this part. Plus, you don't wanna hear me whining. It's funny how when I'm working in an area that I can't see anything, I just close my eyes. I'm trying to you know, get my uh, inner daredevil out so that I can see what's going on behind the veil. But no luck yet. Okay, I think I'm on. I am on. Now it's a matter of, can I get enough force behind this thing with two fingers to break that? Uh, I was going in reverse because I'm backwards. I gotta turn this wrench around. I dropped it. <laughs> Love it. Okay, gotta always have one of these magnets with you. See if we can find this wrench. Dropped it down that way. There we are. Okay, lefty loosey, righty tidy. But when you're working backwards, remember, you know, you gotta account for that. So, all right, let's do this again. It was like a one in a million shot for me to get on the head of that bolt back there. Let's see if we can do two in a million. Right, I can't remember how it went in. I am on again. Let's see if we can reach in there and make some magic happen. I'll tell you. Yeah, I was popped off, but this ratcheting wrench is absolutely what you need for back in here. I promise you this, this same bolt will not go on. What I'll do is I'll get a smaller bolt, run it through there from, probably from, well, yeah, from the back, and I'll put a wing nut on this side. So I can just pop that wing nut off by hand, push that bolt out, and that'd be the end of it. 
I'm going about a hair at a time. But I am doing it. It's getting good and loose now. It just wants to keep popping off the further I come out with it. The uh, less balance I have on the head of it. Everything in me tells me to get my hand out of this hole with all these sharp pointy objects crushing into the bones and the tissue. This is not natural. <laughs> okay. Any time now. Uh, I think, I think maybe. I mean, it's on the edge, but I truly don't think I could get it with my fingers any better than just continuing to try to use the wrench. So I'm pushing the wrench over with my thumb when you hear the ratcheting and I'm pulling it back with my forefinger that's and I'm using my middle finger to hold the head of the wrench over the nut. All of this going on at the same time. Tell me that God is not amazing in his creation and there's so much more talent than this out there. There we go. Pretty awesome. Let's give him the glory for everything. Even for turning a nut that you can't see with a tool that was made by people who he gave good intelligence to. Oh yeah. It's coming guys. It's coming. <laughs> this is wild. I wonder if it's off and I'm just holding it up against the hole and continuing to turn it here. Oh, I just dropped the wrench a little bit. Uh, oh, I hate to pull it out, but I'm going, I'm going to let go. Wrench is still stuck in there. Oh, my aching hands. I'm not sure what this is. Some kind of grease. Okay. I got to stretch my back out. All right. I'm taking this front one off just so I can have more room to get my hands back in there i uh slipped off and tried to use my fingers and i still i'm still too tight to make it happen so we're going to uh try to get more room what else do you do right i could have done changed the oil in about 12 cars by now Now that I've got that off, let's see if we can get in here a little bit better. I don't think it's gonna do a whole lot of good, but can't hurt, that's for sure. We're so close. Okay, we're gonna pull that out. See if there's any chance I can get my fingers on here. And get it to move, yes. All right, I feel it. It's going, it's going. All right, I got it. Here's the bracket. It's the bolt still in the bracket. Oh, oh my gosh. This is the head that I was working on. Oh, my hand. Wow. There's got to be a better way. So, I just got that out. I'm about to try to move this and let's see if it's going to even move after all of that so there's a connection there and then the one back in there those are both off now this should rotate out and away but it's not i don't even know if that's what the manual's talking about boy something's been hide from me there's another bolt up top i got the one below that's the only one that was visible the one over on the right now there's the one on the top 
I'm gonna remove it. We're gonna see what happens. Really, how far is it going to move? Out of my way. I don't think it's gonna go that far. Um, let's look at all this stuff down here. This is ridiculous for an oil change, folks. I tell you, man, am I looking forward to good constructive criticism. I want to learn how to do this better and not cause this kind of an issue going forward this kind of a challenge now there's no getting this out of here unless you you know take all these connections down here all these electrical connections apart and maneuver this out but I'm not doing that I'm just going to at least it's flexible now and I could possibly get in here with a different kind of wrench. So let's see what we can accomplish. If I haven't showed you an up close and personal look of the, at this, I want you to see how close that's up against it. It's rubbing it. This is pressed up against it or it's pushed on it so tight that it doesn't seem that it should be there, you know, and, and there's no maneuvering that. that that's, that's just where it is that's bracketed there unbelievable this is a bad design sorry case you know I started looking down here there are two connections coming in and two connections going out down here at the base of this thing so you could remove these two connections over here if you wanted to guess who doesn't want to deal with that I bought this husky strap wrench so we're going to see if we can slide this strap up in around this thing get some leverage on it and get it uh, un unscrewed so uh, wish me luck I had to take that jacket off it's starting to get a little warm Bring it over this way. Pull this down. Let's get it all the way up here first. Yeah, what, $50 in? filter wrenches uh, not quite 25 bucks maybe I've got no action so far I'm gonna try to keep it going all the way around before I start pulling on it come on it's not going much further let's see if this does anything ah uh. There was a turn. There was a turn. Holy crap, somebody torqued this puppy on there. Okay, so I gotta pull the strap around further. <laughs> somebody has torqued this puppy so stinking tight. This is from the manufacturer. So once you do it once, you won't torque it like this. There it is. Wow, I'm still not sure I could even do it by hand at this point. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna take this thing and keep going. This is the strap you want in here. This is the one. So now you know, I mean, unless you've got a better plan, I wanna know about it if you do. This is 
success feeling. The wind's blowing, my adrenaline's flowing. The subscribers are growing. Let's keep this thing going. Wait, I think I might have said going twice. I don't know, maybe not. Growing, going. Oh, okay, I don't want to go that way. But I think, I think I'm, I'm capable of doing it by hand, but why not, since I'm on here, because it's so stinking hard to get it on here, why not try to get one more good solid turn? I gotta pull this back a little to try to bring this back over here. You see what I'm doing, right? I sure hope the visual is good because I hope I never record this again. <laughs> I hope this helps you guys if y'all have a case. Okay, that's definitely gonna be loose enough. So let's take this strap off and let's by hand let's get this filter off of here i say definitely nothing's definite now i can't even get my hand around it to do it wow it's catching on just let me show you just turning it is catching on this fitting here how ridiculous is that i mean you're pushing from here over to there this is against that I, getting the new one on is going to be a bear get that out of the way Still not easy. Has anyone else recorded this on YouTube? If they did, let me see it. Link it in here in your comment if you can do that. I don't know if you can do that or not. Gonna look like a wildcat got a hold of my hands by the time this is over. I'm gonna get a bucket just in case I start losing oil. Stick it under here. You'd think the oil would all be down, drained out by now. Uh, golly guys what in the world it's just that this is so of course this is falling down now <laughs> okay I got it propped up for a second but that's not even the deal this bracket over here there we go we got it out finally got it out holy moly all of that for this little old filter okay let me show you what we're looking at in there okay this is our area that we're working in and that's our oil filter connection this right here this guy this is the culprit you know what it was kind of up over this it needs to be back in here I'm going to get that you don't want this wire here chafing down on this but there's a lot of there's a little bit of flexibility I'm gonna get some zip ties and I'm gonna get this puppy in a better position so that it's not cramped up against that we're gonna do that right now first thing I did is I covered my little opening where the oil filter goes on there just make sure no debris falls in there as i'm messing around up above it that that definitely is better so there's just no better place for it than just right here <clears throat> i just got that wire kind of around that nut 
and just trying to get this to stay back there the best I can. I'm afraid that's going to chafe on that wire eventually. Unless I can keep it from moving. I don't really have a good place to zip tie it to. I want to mess around a little bit more and then we're going to get the filter on. Okay, here's our new filter. Let's uh, pop it open. Put a little oil around the seal on it and let's get it on there hopefully we can make it fit in there just the way we need to we oiled up around the seal a little bit get this guy out of the way and with it right there the filter does go on nice I'm just going to take it by hand. I'm going to move this up out of my way a little bit. And just get it hand tight. I'm not going to overdo it, but I'm going to give it a little bit more. That's got it. That should do the filter. Now we'll put the bracket back on and get everything back in place. Then we'll have to re uh, put in those two fuel filters after we fill the oil up. Okay, this is the bolt and washer that came out of that. I went and bought a number eight so that it should slide right through that opening without any problem and I bought a wing nut so that I can get it on and off pretty easily on this side it's got a Phillips or flat screwdriver tip drive there. so we'll see if we can get that on to hold that bracket on and allow me to get it off easily next time all right so we're gonna take this in and get it through that hole going from underneath yeah there's just no easy way in here okay so we're through okay now that the screws through we'll see if we can get this bracket over the back side of that screw and uh, then we'll get that wing nut on there right behind it okay we got the bracket over the little number eight screw or bolt so i'm gonna get my hand out i'm gonna try to find that wing nut and get in there with it i tell you i'm sorry uh, that you can't see anything here but for me to be able to even get over here it's uh really just impossible for me to show you anything up close but i'm trying to hold this wing nut like this between my fingers and slide my fingers in there and hopefully try to turn this i brought this along with me to try to get in there so i can turn it hopefully on this wing nut if i don't knock that bracket off as i'm trying to do this and i just don't know how i'm going to get in there and make that happen after realizing that this is a battle i don't want to fight y'all might think i'm crazy but all this is is a bracket that's holding two of these kind of steady two of these hoses or lines they're they're solid metal lines i'm just going to run a, a zip tie through this and hold that bracket on i think that'll be fine you know and then i could cut that zip tie when i'm going to replace this and put a brand new one in each and every time so let's back out this screw plans change right there's the screw i've got it out now i've got this bracket in my other hand i'm gonna have to pull it out for now we can put the zip tie through this zip tie is a little bit bigger than the hole the width of it is so i need a little thinner one we'll see if this blue one will go through there see if it's any thinner I think we're good there all right so I'm gonna pull that on through hopefully yeah 
got it through on this side now the bracket's going to go on that zip tie this is crazy so put it on this direction because the bracket's got to go around those hoses if i can find this little hole here uh, where's she at okay there it is the zip tie is through the hole on the bracket so i'm gonna fish the bracket all the way around this is actually a pretty good little plan as far as getting the bracket around there now the question is how can i get the other end of the zip tie pull it out with this hand try to tie this zip tie into itself you know which shouldn't be too difficult nothing should be too difficult let's get this light i'm having a hard time seeing anything i know you can't see nothing oh god it, it's tight okay i got the zip tie zip i just got to get the bracket back in the place over both of these bars it's over both of them I know this doesn't have the strength of the bolt but check it out this is just holding it's it's not really holding any large amount of pressure in my opinion it's holding <clears throat> these two little hoses and just trying to keep them from vibrating in any way bad pull the zip tie around so I can get more leverage on tightening it up put these pliers in here to pull on this zip tie see if I can tighten it any more than I already have you can see here that blue zip tie I've got the bracket around the back side holding those lines together holding the bracket on the lines I'm gonna go above that with another zip tie and just zip tie those two lines together to again alleviate any kind of vibration. Voila, those are definitely more sturdy. We have the lower one with the bracket. It's not gonna go anywhere, I'll cut this off. So I cut that off. Next time I access this, I won't have to cut this big thick white one. I'll just cut the little thin blue one down there, pull that bracket off, and then I'll re-zip tie it. That'll save me an hour of time. So trying to get in there. And Get my wrench back behind there and get that un unscrewed, or at least a good 15 minutes now that I know where it's at and what tool to use. Not gonna have to do that again. So I thought I would go back under and uh, grab my Allen wrenches and see if I could determine the best size. Even though yesterday I did, uh, I discovered that the 12 is actually what fits this perfectly. So check it out. I don't know how I missed that yesterday, but the 12 is working good. I was using the 7 16ths, and the 7 16ths, let me take that 12 out, 7 16ths had that play in it, and uh, so I was able to tighten this side with this 12 because it fits in here just fine. I'm not talking about in the head. I'm talking about I've got room to put it in there. On the other side, however, with this hydraulic filter in the way, I'll show you my problem here with this particular 12. There's no, there's no way to get it in there between the filter. So the filter literally has to be off in order to use this tool. I just ordered, I just ordered some sockets that have, uh, you know, every size needed. And there's no socket that's gonna get in there either with the ratchet, so, uh, gosh. And this is perfectly round on the edges. All I can think about is getting some vice grips to see if I can tighten it any better, but the, if you remember yesterday, the 7 16th, it did fit in there, because it's smaller, but it's got all this play. So I did try to tighten it the best I could with all that play before it stripped around. Uh, and of course, I don't wanna destroy that, but, uh, yeah, that's the predicament I'm in under here, but hopefully we'll have no leaks. Hopefully it's tight enough. Okay, so this is the motor oil that I purchased 
from the case dealer to uh, replace the oil. It's a 10W40, and this is one gallon. This calls for 1.9 gallons, and so we're gonna start with this one gallon, then we'll add the other. Now, obviously, we're not gonna be able to start this tractor and check this fluid level because we still have to get those fuel filters back on. And so, one step at a time. gonna be a slow go I've got a filter in the bottom of this funnel here so it's taking a minute to drain okay let's open number two get it going to we'll put the majority of this one in since it costs for 1.9 gallons we won't put the whole thing in once we get it cranked up we'll check the dipstick and just fill it a little at a time till we reach that close to max level. All right, we've got almost two gallons in. We didn't put the whole second gallon in because we're gonna check it when we get the opportunity to do so. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, cap on. We're gonna get some rain here real soon and I don't want any water to drain down into that oil. So we're gonna make sure that cap's on there nice and tight. Now I'm gonna go underneath the tractor take my flashlight and just make sure that there's no leaks whatsoever I've been monitoring it a little as we've been going but yeah that looks good let's check this other plug on the other side currently we look good of course we will know more when we start the tractor and we get it pressurized oil running through there and of course we don't have any oil running through it yet so there would be no leak up here the oil's not even made it up here yet to the filter but we'll definitely check that once we get the tractor running now i think we're okay to go ahead and slide this one back on there let's see if it just clicks yeah it just clicks into place and i don't believe we'll do any harm getting this one on here either i don't think it's going to be in our way for our fuel filters all right those are both good now it's time to put the pre-filter on and then we have to, uh, of course, hook up the uh, electrical lead that goes into the bottom of it as soon as we get it back on there. I can feel my first sprinkle coming down. Overnight, we had these stored in the barn, so we put plastic over top so a bug or nothing like that could climb down in there and get in our filter. So it's time to pop the pre-filter on first. And then I'm going to do something different than I did on my 50-hour when it comes to the priming. Uh, as I mentioned early on, uh, I read the manual a little bit, a little bit deeper, and learned a little bit more. So I'm hoping that the priming of it, the way we're going to do it this time, might help make it start. If you watched the video from last time, we could never get started with the prime pump, and so we had to resort to some magic. Check out that video to learn more about that. Hopefully, we won't have to resort to that on this video. Okay, let's get this one on in there. This one's the one that has the electrical connection on the bottom of it before I do this I just want to feel around this connection just to make sure that there's nothing in the way everything seems to be nice and clean all right let's see if we can get it started here get it nice and tight by hand I'm gonna wipe the fuel off just to make sure it's I get a good grip as I'm tightening it all right that ought to do it Okay, that's got it, no doubt. All right, let's find that electrical lead. I kind of hid it down here and put it away so the 
fuel wouldn't leak up in there or down on it so here it is let's find i got it all stored away take a second to get it released and back up here there we go right there it is now if you remember it's got this wire that you push in in order to get it to connect you just got to make sure that you put it on the right direction to do so all right let's see if we're there i think i just got it all right yeah it's connected before we go any further i want to tell you a very uh, important fuel filter that's down low here if you can see i have the light shining on it that's a clear glass container and inside that container there is a filter that you're supposed to take this apart and clean that filter every so often if you can see it up in there now it's behind you've got to unscrew it and drop that glass out and clean that filter it's behind this <laughs> Tell me how we can get down in there and we'll get it done. But, yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't know, we, uh, there's a good visible inspection. I think the glass is dirty, but the inside looks clean. What do you say? I don't know. I can't even get in there to clean the glass off. Really a bad spot for it, for sure. I'm gonna move my flashlight and see if I can reach it. Yeah, so I'm rubbing the glass off a little bit with my thumb, my fingers here. Once I do that, I guess this is how you access it. This has got to be, I mean, there's no other way to get in there. Maybe you can loosen that with your fingers. That's the bottom. It's like a twisty, screwed in piece. Let's shine the light on there again. See if... Uh, Let's see if it looks any cleaner. To me, it looks dirty on the inside. I tell you, it, the wind is blowing. The mist is coming in now. I'm sure you can hear it. But I'm not going to have much longer that I'm going to be able to work. I just shut the bed of the truck, the cover, and uh, tried to cover all the tools that I had out back there. Uh, but I'm going to read up on this uh, little glass bottle fuel filter. So here's the extent of it. It says loosen the screw, number one. Then it says remove the glass container. There's number two. Then it says remove the filter, clean the filter. So the filter's up inside there. That's the screw. And uh, the only way to loosen that it apparently is going to be with your fingers. So I'm hoping it's not too tight. When I do, I'm sure I'll dump some fuel on my on the ground there and hopefully not much at all. I'm assuming at that point the glass container just falls off and then that filter should pop out and we can clean it. All right, so I talked to the case dealer and they told me it's exactly what I thought. You just have to somehow, down there at the bottom, he said he uses a small pair of channel locks to get in there. Grab hold of that little circular area unscrew it that wire will stay attached to the top and it just flips up when it does that glass bottle releases you can pull it down little string filters on the inside and you just have to replace that put it all back in there the problem is getting in there with some channel locks and that is the filter that actually catches all the garbage and stuff prior to going into your pre-filter and the main filter that we're going to be putting here so i'm going to attack that as soon as possible very soon because it looks real dirty but i'm going to go ahead and get this one pumped primed ready to go and get that other one on see if we can get this tractor started before that rain comes down maybe they're thinking i'm about to die or something they're circling me okay next step is to loosen this bleed screw about one turn if i can get in there and get it done all right there's one turn then i'm supposed to pump this pump until fuel comes out 
we'll see if that will happen and then I tighten that screw down now this is the time or this is the section in my previous um, fuel filter change that I never had any success as I mentioned and so I'm only gonna do this a few more times and then I'm gonna tighten that screw down and move to the next step and I'll resort to the fix that I did last time if this doesn't work let's go ahead and tighten this down now I didn't go about it in this order last time so that might help but I did not see any fuel coming out of there all right I'm putting a little light coat of oil around the seal here on this fuel filter now we're gonna get it in there we're gonna tighten it up to the top without spilling it if possible there we go let's get it on this one I'll tell you what now that it's holding I'm gonna dry it off as I spin it because it's really wet now We cleaned all the debris off the top of this filter before we stored it for the evening. Mrs. Lovely did that for me, which was very lovely of her. All right, let's clean this off so we can get a good three quarter turn by hand from this point. My hands are very slippery from the fuel now, so it may be a little challenging. Then we're gonna attempt another bleed before we try to start this thing let's see if we can turn it i think we're good all right next step okay for your benefit it's telling me here to disconnect the fuel return line and that's number two that's right here here's the filters okay it's got this circle that magnifies it out. Not sure exactly where it's coming from, but the fuel return line is what I'm supposed to disconnect. And then I'm supposed to push that priming pump until fuel starts coming out of that line. And then I reconnect it. At that point, I'm ready to start the tractor, I think. That looks like that would be the return line. That would be the end line right there. And that would be the return. I'll disconnect that one again and give it a go that's the one i had disconnected earlier to do the oil change uh, i don't know that that's it but we'll see so just squeeze that in once again pull that out and i think possibly the fuel is supposed to pop out down there when i'm priming can we see that? Yeah. Let's see if that works. That may not be it at all, y'all. Yeah. I see some fuel dribbling. Shooting out a little bit. It's dripping. I think maybe we're onto something. I would say it's going to need a lot more than that. I talked to two dealers last time I did this job and they neither one of them told me to do this. But if you read the manual carefully enough, you might find something like this. We'll see if it does any good or not. So little's coming out, I doubt it's gonna do good. But I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this. And we're gonna see if she'll start. We got the fuel filters on we got the engine oil in at least most of it we've got everything tightened up so let's see if we get a start on this I got so much junk in the floorboard of this tractor because it's been sprinkling and I didn't, I didn't want all these tools to get wet all right I'm not holding my breath we'll see what happens goes nothing. We're going to let it 
sit here for just a second. I'm going to leave the ignition on. Alright. As expected, it didn't start. So I'm going to show you my little secret. Uh, if you watched the previous video, you know the secret. If you didn't, this is going to help you. All right, we're gonna pop off this air filter and then we're gonna get a towel. And we're gonna soak it just a little bit in some regular automobile gasoline. Ooh, this filter's dirty. Need to get that clean anyway. That's part of this service. I just haven't got to this point yet. We'll go ahead and clean it and be right back. All right, I just took a towel, I slung it out, made sure that the towel's clean. Just gonna put a little gasoline right here in the center of it. It's going down in a bucket underneath it. That ought to be plenty. So I'm not sure how safe this is, but I just stuffed up around over top of that air filter. Let's give it a go and see what happens. I will tell you, last time I did this, it started right up, but uh, I had this Tell you what, I'm gonna pop this air filter off. Try to go straight into the secondary filter. See if that'll do anything. Just make sure we got no oil on the ground. No, oh, that's that's fuel there. We got no leaks there. I would have normally let it run longer than that since I just got it started with that little fuel trick there, but I didn't like that low oil pressure. We're gonna let it settle for five minutes. I'm just gonna check that oil level, see what she looks like right now. While we're waiting, I'm curious if. Uh, when we try to start it back here in a few minutes after we check that oil i'm curious if it'll start right up without the fuel trick again now that it's got some fuel moving through there uh when i did this previously on that previous video i probably let it ran run about five minutes and i shut it down i wasn't changing oil at that time so i didn't have any reason to be overly cautious and then a few minutes later i started it right back up and it had no issue but i didn't even let it run a full minute this time probably just want to be careful all right let's just go ahead and pull the dipstick out it's not quite been five minutes but it's not quite to the minimum at this moment so that's odd because i did put almost a full two gallons in i'm going to go ahead right now even though we've not waited that total time i'm going to top i'm going to finish off that last gallon there's probably only about i don't know 
15% of it still in there, but that might get it right where it needs to be. We'll see. Let's see, where's it? It's actually probably about a third. So yeah. Yeah, we, we could, I think we're gonna do good by putting the rest of this in there, or the majority of it anyway. I don't wanna overfill, of course. We'll get the rest of this in there. Just gonna do a little more. That's got almost all of it. There's a little in the bottom. Before we put all that in there, let's see where we land. All right, that trickled in there. Let's get this back on. Okay, let's see if she'll start up. Let's do it. Thing is my my oil pressure gauge is still showing nothing on it we're gonna let it run for a few minutes this time and after that we're gonna let it set for five minutes or so check it and see where we land I'll let you know as you know, I still have a bracket to put back on right here. So I'm gonna put that bracket back on. And before we wrap up this service, or before we put the loader back on, I'm gonna wrap up the service uh, on the tractor and on the loader. A lot of greasing to be done. That'll come up in another video. But uh, I appreciate you joining me here. We're gonna check together, make sure everything's good. But while we're waiting, I just wanna say, you know, if you've not been a part of our channel and our journey, I'd love to invite you to come along out here with us at the lovely place. What we're trying to do is build a homestead, if I haven't already said that, and uh, we want to be self-sufficient. I say we want to be off-grid. We're going to be, but are you really ever truly off-grid? As long as I got a cell phone, I'm not off-grid. But as much as we can be, not relying on the infrastructure that's in place for society, just in case things go down, we want to be able to uh, be able to manage grow food have livestock that sort of thing so if you haven't done so go ahead and subscribe to the channel like the video if uh, you did get something out of it or even if you want to complain about me comment and tell me what I did wrong I'd love to know because I want to do it better next time uh, we live and learn we're doing it as we go and uh, I do like this case I 75 C when it comes to the way it works what it does for me what I don't like so far is what you just witnessed after several minutes, I still see this gauge is down. I wonder if somehow I've possibly disconnected it or something. I want to rev up the engine a little bit. That's kind of unusual. I don't recall it being there. But uh, in a minute, we're going to shut her down. In fact, we'll go ahead and shut it down now. We'll see what it does after a few minutes here. Let's pop this off again. Let's see where she lands. That's more like it there. It's to the minimum right now when I just first pulled it out. So you see minimum max, it's gotta be in between there. And so I'd like it to be closer to max. That's actually where it's been this whole time prior to changing the oil. Let's go ahead and pop it in. Right under minimum. So we're gonna add the rest of that oil, see where we land. I tell you, there's just not much left in here at all. Not much at all. We'll see if that makes a dent in this. But that would not, you know, that little bit of difference, I don't think, would cause my oil gauge to show completely low. Maybe it's gotta warm up first a lot. I don't know, I'm gonna look into that. And we shall see. 
very likely I'm gonna have to get another quart of oil and put a little bit more of it in there just to get it up closer to that maximum point because that's the end of that two gallons I mean there's a little drip but I can't get my can't turn it that good to get in there to it it's already ran in there real good so we're just going to check it here in a second once that drains all the way down inside that area all right let's wipe it down right it's still in the same spot so we're going to get another quart add a little bit more at a time not going to do that on this video but trust me we're going to get that up there where it needs to be so it apparently you saw me put two gallons in give or take a little it only calls for 1.9 i'm sure i got 1.9 in there and uh that just didn't do the trick but we're going to get the trick done we're going to figure out why it's not showing any pressure on that uh oil gauge and we're just going to keep an eye out for any leaks and make sure everything's good to go. And then we're going to continue this service probably on the next video. We might throw something else really awesome in there in between all this because I know some of you are not interested in this at all. And others, this is all you're interested in. So thanks for hanging in there with me today, lovely people. We'll talk to you next time. God bless you and we'll see you. Take care.